clicker is not going. So while they solve this, my name is Luis Ponce de Leon. I'm a managing director and partner in Boston Consulting Group in the Middle East. I lead the aviation work um, in the region. I, I do work in airports, airlines, and other players in the, in the travel space. Um, I was asked by the GACA team to moderate this session. So this is going to be about airports and reimagining airports. So let me bring a, an analogy of what's happening in other, in other industries so that we can break the ice for, for this session. Let's look at what happened in the computer industry, right? So if we look at the 70s, we had an 11 kilogram computer which basically had 48 kilobytes of, of RAM. Only 50 years later, we have computers that have millions of times more computing power and they are a fraction of the weight. We don't need to go that far. We can stake in the transportation industry. Let's look at what happens in the cars. We started with cars that were just chariots without horses, and this has been evolving into electrical vehicles with assistance driving, and just tomorrow we'll have autonomous drivings, connected cars, and so on. But what happened in the airports in the meantime? The airports got bigger. The customer experience became worse, and the ecosystem became more complex. I think we need to be fair to the airports as well. The airports are facing many challenges. They have strong regulations. There is a focus on security and safety. There are uh, things happening like pandemic that is changing completely the travel patterns. But we also have a lot of opportunities ahead. We have new technologies coming up. We have the future of retailing. We have new uh, the, the growth of e-commerce and cargo. So in this context, despite all the challenges, there is a lot of opportunities for the airports of the future. So today, we want to think about how would the future of the airport would look like. And to start the session, I would like to welcome John Selden to the stage, who will talk to us about uh, his view on the future of airports. John is the current chief executive officer of Neom Airports and Airlines. Previously, he was the general manager in Atlanta and previously at JFK, so impressive track record. And I would like to give him the word to talk to us about his view. Thank you, Luis. Thank you, John. Appreciate it. Thank you. Oh, not the right slide, but a good picture, I guess. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. And um, this is a real honor for me to be here in Saudi Arabia. Um, I currently work in Neom, um, the land of the future, the airport of the future, and the airline of the future. And um, I'm going to talk about my views very quickly about airports only. So the airport of the future is going to change. In my career, which is very long in aviation, I've been driven by three principles of running an airport. The first principle is airplanes only make money when they're in the air. Looking at airplanes on the ramp, at the terminal, taxiing, is wrong. They shouldn't be there. They need to get airborne. That's the first principle. So we got to get them off the ground. The next driving principle that I always try to work on is the airport customer. And I think I've heard a million times how we're going to fix the passenger experience today. And we talk about the airport customer being the passenger. It's, it's, it's part, but the air traffic controller the pilot, the airline, the employees, the stakeholders who run the concessions and security and custom, those are the airport's customers. And there's many friction points in those jobs. How long does it take to get a badge? How, how do I get to the airport? The parking is hard. There's so many things we have to look at in the future and where we're going that we have to address all the customer concerns. And finally, the one that drives me the most, I use the term crazy, is that people do not go to an airport to stay. They want to leave as fast as they can. It is a place that they don't like. I, I see people, I, when I was in Atlanta, people would run to get out. And it's a pretty good airport, by the way. So those are the driving principles that the future and technology are going to address and fix for us. And do we need an airport as we know it today? I don't think so. I think technology is going to take us somewhere that we don't need. So 
and we've talked a lot about airports and airplanes, and you can't have an efficient airport if you don't have an efficient airspace. Because if the planes can't take off and land, I don't care how good you are as a manager, I don't care how great your facility is, nobody's moving. It's going to be terrible. One more try. Ah, airspace. My old, my old hangout. JFK, Kennedy, Newark, LaGuardia. This is airspace for about 130 million passengers. As you've seen, the vision of Saudi is for 350, 330 million passengers. And every airport you talk to wants to go to 100 million passengers. This is 130 one day. This is fragile. This is not resilient. When something goes wrong, a thunderstorm, weather, a runway closes, you have massive delays with this kind of airspace. Ah, big difference. This is 110 million passengers in a year. Highly organized, resilient, can handle some stress. Airspace. So no matter what you do on the ground, you have to do something in the air first to fix it. So we have to go forward in the future to fix airspace like this. And this airspace is very efficient, and it's efficient for one good reason. It's efficient because we can use time-based flow management there, and we can use dispersal headings, and we can do flight idle descents all the way down to the runway. We can do unrestricted climbs to altitude. How many times you've taken off in an airplane and it does this on its way up? Every time it does that, it's burning more fuel than it needs to. The airport of the future needs to look something like this in the air before you fix the ground. No delays, minimal delays, 2,600 flights a day out of this airport. Just remarkable. Uh, let's see. So, we've talked about the airspace, we talk about the airport. The airport, how many times have people taxied for 20, 25 minutes to get to the gate? Come on, we can do better. We can design better, we can operate better. We need to design airports so airplanes can get off the runway and get to their gate. Easily done with some different ideas. Very long, large terminals, if you land on the wrong side, will take you 20, 25 minutes to get around. When that airplane is not in the air, it's not making money. We also need to have technology help us turn that gate, get that airplane up in the air as fast as it can go. We need to allow airlines to take that airplane that they're using more, getting up in the air, to use that asset longer, and maybe instead of flying three or four flights a day, can fly five or six flights a day. Make it more efficient. Now, let's talk about baggage. We're going to get into the airport a little bit. Baggage. Do I need to bring it into the terminal? I mean, come on. I can get it delivered to my house. I can have it picked up at my house. Can I have... Can I take a train and drop it off at the last train station? Why do I have to take it into the building? Maybe, maybe I do, maybe I don't. I don't think in the future you'll be taking your airport, your luggage, that far. I think we'll have methods to get it to you much quicker and not in the airport. Maybe we'll have a drive-through drop-off. If you're in your car, you drive through a drive-through, it'll take a biometric picture of your face, a biometric picture of your bag, and oh, by the way, there's biometrics for luggage now. And you, they'll take it out of your trunk, and you just go on your way or get dropped off. Baggage should not be in the terminal going forward. And here's the other piece that's going to happen. Ticket counters. We all know those are going to go away, right? Maybe you need a few. You certainly need hundreds. Everything will be done prior to getting to the airport. And your face is your ticket. Uh, parking. Ooh, that's a bad one for an airport operator, right? We already lived through the Uber effect which is, why would I pay to park my car if I can get dropped off and picked up and taken back to my house? Cheaper. No, parking revenue is already going down, parking's going down. And then, obviously, mass transit. Most airports are working on mass transit. I know they are here in, in the kingdom. And finally, the death of airport parking. Self-driving cars. Oh, my goodness. I get in my car, it takes me to the airport, I get out, it goes back to my house, into the garage, and when I want it to pick me up, when I come back, it comes back and gets me and I go back. I, I can tell you I had 32,000 parking spaces in Atlanta. I don't know what we're going to do with them, but that's, that's where we're heading. Okay. Ah. So, 
the, we've talked about the future airport, we've talked about the future airspace, let's talk about the future customer experience a little bit. We've all, I think you've heard throughout the forum there's gonna be this one app, one platform, hopefully it's in my glasses and not in my phone because I can't stand carrying my phone, but you should be able to book your flight, your, tour, your tours, your dinners, your hotel room, everything will be done personalized and even if I want a fresh loaf of bread and some, some milk at my house when I get back, I have that delivered 15 minutes after my scheduled arrival time because everything is predictive. Everything is predictive. Um, biometrics, predictive travel to the gate. Uh, we all have phones that tell us how long it's going to take us to drive. If I know when I get out of my car, my, my phone is telling me I have a three-minute walk to the gate, I go through security, I go through security, oh, by the way, in the jet bridge because we'll have, we'll have um, cyborg smellers that take care of um, contraband and explosives and CAT scans going through and you just board the plane at the time you're supposed to go and your journey is, is shortened dramatically. Um, but we still may need some food and beverage, you know, by, by the way, in the app, hopefully I can get exactly what I wanted ordered so it's on the plane and I don't even have to carry it, but maybe I need it delivered. And finally, um, when you arrive, there'll be a universal identity biometric. Your face will be your passport. And as you come out of the plane, you go out to JetBridge, face, screen, same screening coming into the country, and you're on your way. The secure area starts at the JetBridge. Wouldn't that be nice? I think it's coming. But finally, what am I describing? What happens if, the arrive, if your departure experience becomes your arrival experience? How much do you all spend when you arrive in Riyadh? I'm getting out of that. I'm getting out of there as fast as I can. I, if, the carts are free. So if my departure experience becomes my arrival experience, I have no dwell time. I'm not in the airport. I just come from my house, I go to the gate, I go to my seat. When I land, I go out and I go home. Uh-oh, we're in trouble. So, four things make up airport revenue. Parking, concessions, leasing, and aeronautical charges. Well, I've just described parking is under tremendous pressure. Concessions will be under tremendous pressure. Aeronautical charges, we're gonna grow, right? We need to lower our aeronautical charges, make it so airlines want to come to our airport, have cheap ticket prices, let our airlines make money so we get the passengers we want to come to the airport. Leasing. Well, if I'm building an in-flight kitchen and my property is expensive on the airport, I go build it right outside the, I build it right outside the airport. If I build a hotel, so I have, uh, I want it on the airport. Well, I can't make the property twice as expensive as it is right outside the airport. So I need to be competitive. So my aeronautical charges are under pressure and my leasing charges are under pressure. So the business model is under pressure. And what does that mean? Well, before I get into that, this is why we have airports. They are the economic engine of where they are. If you look at, these are just three examples. If you look at Dubai, 86 million passengers, 196 billion SAR in economic activity, and 82, excuse me, 466,000 jobs because of that airport. Um, if you look at Atlanta, you can see it's even bigger. So you want passengers. The airport is there to bring passengers and economic activity to the region. So if the airport is under pressure, and this is the point I'm trying to make, we need to help our airports out because what are we doing right now? We're privatizing them. We're making them for profit. We're making the costs of airports to their consumers, their customers, go up. We need to do the exact opposite. We need not to incorporate. We need not to privatize. We need to have the airport operate, and if it can't make its, meet its goal of being self-sustaining, the government, the people who benefit from this, the community, the state, the city, the country, they need to come up with a little bit of cash because the multiplier passenger to GDP is tremendous. Thank you very much. Thank you, John. Thank you. Thank you, John. Now,
I think after this speech from John, which brought up very interesting topics, and some of them I would say um, quite uh, controversial with some interesting points, I would like to bring uh, on stage some of our fellow panelists to discuss some of the, uh, the points that John brought and some of the questions. Um, I have Mr. Mohamed Al Makhloud, CEO of, of Riyadh Airports, Rajesh Arora, Ula Shevir Gren, Jack Foriarti, and Jeff Mulder. Thank you. So we'll be sitting for this one. Um, I think we've heard uh, a number of, of points that John brought um, that I would like to touch upon the, the concept of. Um, the airport destination versus a pure infrastructure, the role of public sector versus private sector in this context, the pressure on the business model. Um, before we touch upon those, I wanted to ask a first question which it relates to the overall topic. How does the airport of the future, how will the airport of the future will look like, right? So how will it look like, like in 20 years? And I would like to hear the opinion of, of the panel here. I will start with uh, Mr. Mohammed from uh, Riyadh Airports. Thank you. Thank so you what Lewis. is the future of the airport? Thank you, Louis. Uh, maybe allow me to uh, uh, start first with thanking GACA for uh, hosting us, uh, uh, arranging for this very, uh, very important event, which really comes uh, after a major pandemic that hits everybody ever since, uh, which really uh, uh, bring a major shift, uh, bring everybody, exchange ideas, share best practices. Uh, maybe it was back to your question, uh, which is really very interesting. Maybe I will, uh, I will a little bit disagree with uh, with uh, with John. Uh, I personally feel and see airports will move uh, to fully digitalization, which will enhance the passenger experience, which will enhance also the efficiency, uh, and will move towards uh, more of uh, a destination uh, entertainment. Uh, I don't think airport will, will remain just uh, come in and, uh, and, uh, and go. Uh, so uh, I see this is the airport where, 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 where will be more of enjoyment, more entertainment, uh, not any more uh, queuing or, uh, or processing. I think uh, uh, we will see more of infrastructure development, uh, which will... Uh, which will cater for uh, new technologies, uh, uh, new generation of uh, airplanes. I think the drive of this is our young generation, Z, uh, Z generation and, uh, and beyond. I think those people uh, was or were born uh, in a world full of uh, smart uh, devices, uh, digitization. They come here with, with high expectation, which really uh, uh, they cannot see it now. Uh, so I think technology will, will evolve. Technology will be the game changer for airports. And this is my, honestly, uh, uh, I don't think and I don't believe airports and passengers now would just want to come and uh, this maybe will upset some people, but I think this is what, what we'll, we'll see. And this is my, my personal uh, view. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much. Um, I think... Uh, we hear technology, right? I think technology is the big elephant in the room, the one that is, I, I don't know, there is a big hope that it will solve a lot of the problems and probably one of the key drivers of change. But, um, I wanted to hear from uh, Ulash from SAP. Before we talk about specifically about technology, how do you see the future? So in 20 years from now, where do you see the airports from a customer experience, from a business model? Where, where do you see we are going? Thanks, thanks, Luis, and thanks everyone for, for joining this panel discussion. Actually, at SAP, we built a, a future of the airport prototype. You can go online, Google, and check it out. Uh, it's a simulation prototype where you can be the executive uh, of the airport and play around to make critical decisions, which are AI, IoT uh, supported. I'm not sure if it's still uh, running. It was before the pandemic, but there will be definitely uh, videos around it. And we called it the intelligent airport. Uh, if you, again, look up Wikipedia, what intelligence is. Uh, intelligence is the uh, skill to sense what's happening around you, adapt to it, uh, to ever-changing uh, conditions around you. And that's the skill that differentiates human beings from the rest of the uh, living uh, things. So why do we call it an intelligent airport? Because we believe in the future, airports will have to sense 
and react to ever-changing conditions better. And maybe without changing too much the infrastructure and without spending uh, these huge capital expenditures, we can make airports uh, more, more intelligent. And once they can sense better what's happening around them in terms of maintenance, it might be the plant maintenance, but it might be the maintenance of the bridge or even the uh, real estate or the toilets in the airport. The moment you can prevent these things, uh, you know, disruptions from happening, everybody will be happier, everybody will have a smoother uh, journey around it. And the second thing is about uh, understanding and sensing the uh, you know, uh, passenger needs or the customer needs, uh, if you will. The moment the airport and the airline and the other operators agree on this customer data thing, or maybe we'll go ahead and just publish our Google IDs. Hey, dear Riyadh Airport, you can access my ID and provide me a more personalized service. Because this is what's, about, what's hindering us from this uh, personalization, hyper-personalization. And once we uh, understand what the customer or the passenger is willing to do or what the special needs are, we can react to it uh, in, a, in a much better way. And thirdly, I think they will become a lot more sustainable, uh, both for the communities around the airports, uh, as well for the employees, uh, and uh, as well from a CO2 perspective. We are already working on our systems. We provide finance, procurement, HR, and many other systems. So we are integrating CO2 dimension, the environmental dimension, into every transaction uh, you make. So every procurement decision every, uh, or every uh, decision you make will have a CO2 impact, and this will be visible uh, to the management. So these are the three perspectives, I believe, what will make airports more intelligent. Thank you very much, Olash. I wanted to invite Jack to provide a different perspective, not from, yes. from an infrastructure point of view, engineering point of view. Of course, I mean, I see uh, the airport as part of a bigger aviation, uh, uh, I would say, environment. So there are different stakeholders that have uh, defined the future. Uh, so I would say if we start by uh, airlines uh, and uh, let's start even by aircraft manufacturers. So if we, saw, we see the future plans that uh, uh, Airbus and Boeing and other manufacturers are having on, on future aircraft, on the hydrogen uh, uh, aircraft and the way uh, the designs that we're, sh we're seeing of these aircraft that are not typical to the air aircraft that we, that we are seeing today, uh, like a triangular-shaped uh, uh, aircraft, it will uh, need, as an airport uh, operator and the airport, uh, I would say, business, it will need us to move and be agile and to, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to work with these uh, aircraft manufacturers to predict uh, and it will impact the, the way we plan our airports. Not only from the planning on the air side and the terminal and passenger experience, but also from the logistics and the infrastructure. Like, how are we going to cater for hydrogen? In the aircraft, in the, in the, in the airport, to, to cater for the aircraft. Uh, uh, John touched on airspace. I think it's really key. I mean, we want to build uh, more airports, but do we have the right airspace capacity? So we really need to work with all the stakeholders, uh, air, air navigation service providers, other occupiers of the airspace, because the airspace is not only, uh, I would say, commercial. There's a lot, there's military and so on. So we need to really work with them to optimize as much as possible and squeeze in as much as possible capacity to our airspace, uh, because this is a clear bottleneck for arriving and departure. And third point, the sustainability, I would see us not really even from a transition before we reach to hydrogen aircraft, I would see us using means of uh, uh, zero emission trucks, pushing in uh, aircraft, taking them to the, uh, I would say, threshold of, of the runway, uh, and then uh, uh, putting the engines at the threshold and taking off, and same for the, for, for the landing. So this will save us a lot of fuel. These are just some few ideas. I'll let my colleagues to, to say more things. Thank you. I think Good topics. I think sustainability will will cover it later. But I think it's 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 a trending topic. But of course, one that will have an impact on the infrastructure, right? And today, the airports are probably not ready for that. I wanted to close on this topic with um, with Mr. Jeff from from Oklahoma Airport. So now, with a, with a diff completely different perspective, coming from the U.S., where do you see the future of airports going? So I would start with what's happened in the last 20 years. And if you look, think back to 2000, there are two issues. One, for the first 10 years, was primarily security. At U.S. airports, many airports were dealing with uh, expanding their checkpoint operation and installing baggage screening equipment. That took up a lot of capital for the first 15 years. The second thing that's happened since, that, since 2000 is the use of this phone. That's really dramatically changed the way people travel. And it was out of necessity. Those are two issues that were challenges that needed to be addressed. So it's 
so I, I like to look back before I look forward to see well, what's happening going forward. Hard to predict, but today what we're facing in the U.S. is a workforce challenge. We don't have enough pilots, we don't have enough airline employees, enough service people. I think that's going to drive innovation even more the next 20 years out of necessity to serve the public and serve the, the passenger. Uh, that means, uh, you know, it, when it comes to technology, with, with cleaning your terminal building even, I think you see more automation there just because the lack of people to do those basic things. Ultimately, though, I think it may see more automation with autonomous aircraft uh, and even ultimately autonomous aircraft with passengers. Because if you don't have the pilot workforce to fly the aircraft, yet the demand is there, that's a solution that's going to eventually develop based on society acceptance, but I think that's where we're going. Yeah. I think that's an excellent point, and I think it touches upon one of the key issues today, which is workforce, and I think technology will enable that. I wanted to move on uh, on the topic, and I wanted to hear your perspective on one of the points that John was bringing. The airport as a destination versus an airport as an infrastructure which you just go through, right? I think this is a, quite an uh, important uh, change, right? Because if you go in one direction, it's very different than if you go in the other. So where do you stand there? I think it depends on the community in the airport. I think there are some large communities with large international airports where it could be a destination because you have space, you have room to put amenities in there. Smaller regional airports, it doesn't make sense because you don't have the population and you don't have the foot traffic to support some of these amenities where it becomes a place for people to go besides just got, getting on off an airplane like John talked about. Right. So I think it depends on the community size and the airport size. Right. I think here in the, in the region, we, we are looking at huge airports, uh, huge hubs, right? So I think the model, the question would be, will these airports go into this destination concept? I think the regional airports probably have a different perspective. Um, I wanted to hear from Mr. Rogers. I think this is hitting you uh, really directly because as respons responsible of, of business development, this point of the destination is one of your key drivers of growth. If that goes away, what happens? So where do you stand in that, in that question? Sure. Well, I think uh, the last two, two and a half decades or so, what we have seen uh, you know, a, a transformational journey of the airports from very basic uh, functional airports to airports with a, a commercial prominence to airports now becoming like mini cities. I don't think the debate is about uh, whether the airport should be just bare functional or it should be a, a place or destination. I think both should, should work together. Uh, the basic hygiene points, which, uh, which was mentioned right today, you know, the passengers are facing issues in terms of you know, uh, processes, what, what one has to go through at the airport. I think those points, in any case, those things should also be taken care of. But eventually, uh, airport have already evolved to a larger extent as destination and will continue to evolve as destination. That's my view. Uh, another, another important aspect, and when we look at uh, uh, airports, the known aeronautical revenues have got very significant uh, bearing on the, on the business viability and business bankability. One side that makes the airports uh, profitable, other side, it also helps in terms of cross-subsidizing the airport charges. I think that's, that's another pain point for the passenger at large. So my view is, you know, the more you make airport as a destination, you are, you are working on the non analytical revenues, and that's, we are making the whole journey, the cost as affordable uh, for the, from the passenger points of view. So I think that's something which, uh, uh, going forward, airports are continue to be evolving as, uh, as uh, uh, a place of destination. Mm -hmm. Whether all airports will become uh, like mini cities, I think this, this will depend from airport to airport. What kind of space you have, uh, what kind of demand uh, generation is there for that. So uh, all that will be very specific to the airports, but we have already seen some of the airports becoming more like uh, 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 mini cities. But just to summarize, uh, I think uh, uh, airports will continue to evolve as destination. That, that's my view. I think I'm hearing that it's a necessity for the airport to be sustainable for that to happen. The question would be, will that happen anyway, right? I think probably that's the... I wanted just to close this topic with uh, Mr. Mohammed. If we look at the context of, of Riyadh in particular. Well, and I think my answer will be uh, honestly both. 
you will see it an infrastructure where we will continue to see the airport as a processing, as a queuing or whatever. But uh, definitely uh, will move to, uh, to become more of a uh, destination. Uh, again, uh, you cannot be a destination if you have uh, old infrastructure. And I think it has both way. If there is a demand, there is a growth, there is a, a plan for uh, upgrade or a new airport, I believe it's going to be a destination. And I think uh, uh, you see people uh, choose some airports in the world because they can spend hours without even feeling or knowing or uh, and I think this is uh, it's not easy to say uh, uh, is it infrastructure or, or, or destination and I think the answer will be there will be uh, infrastructure there will be a queuing there will be process but if you are privileged with a new projects with a new airport definitely a destination where will attract will uh, will I think I think it could be anything you will host uh, Events you will have. To, I think airports now. Uh, it, it's a it's a it's a it's a different uh, game. It's a different really. Uh, but hopefully, if there is an opportunity for us in Riyadh, since you're an ask in Riyadh, uh, you will see something different, inshallah. Thank you. I think we are running out of time because we have to welcome the, the rest of the panelists. But I think there is one topic which is about technology, right? Technology is being discussed as the key enabler for everything, right? Yes. Uh, however, the technology is not coming probably at the speed that in other places is coming. I wanted to hear uh, just quickly on, on, this, um, on this topic, uh, maybe starting with Ulash. What is the, if you think about five, 10 years, what are the key technologies that will change the whole customer experience or, or other parts of the airport? And, and what do you expect that impact to be? So what will, what will we see in five years that we don't see today that will change the whole picture? I think over the two days we have complained and exhausted the topic of you know, complaints about the bad customer experience and everything around it. So I'm not going to that. Let me take a different perspective. Have you ever suspected your mobile is listening to you? Because you come across with an ad at Facebook, Instagram, social media somewhere that you didn't tell anybody about. You only thought about it, maybe. I, I'm sure you did. Uh, this happens all the time uh, because the predictive methods of customer segmentation, targeting, and the AI tools used in this has reached such a supreme position, we even ask ourselves, did I think about it or did I type about it? How, how, this, how come this intimate topic is coming in front of me at Facebook? So the technology is there. We are not far away from the technology, yet, we are sitting in an airport, how many million customers, I don't know, in a captured environment. So we are captive of the airport, right? Yet I am not able to interact with the airport to order something, or airport is not coming to me with you know, differentiated uh, offers that I can make use of. And to make this happen, I think the biggest topic is the airport doesn't really know you and doesn't really know the context you are traveling at. And as John said, some of us want to get out of the airport as soon as possible. And sometimes the same person <coughs> want to spend time, more time with the family, want to take it more leisurely if you are traveling for a different purpose. So the context of the travel is also very important, uh, which defines your behavior and needs uh, during the travel. But we can predict these uh, things uh, because we have the data, we know every passenger, we know where they're coming from, we know where they're going to, and we know what mode of operation they are in. We just need to make democratize, if you will, uh, this data across the airport, airline, and the other providers so that we can, you know, uh, provide this uh, excellent customer journey. And to get there, I believe there are things happening already. The AI technology is there. But also IATA is driving the one order methodology, uh, which, you know, starts to see uh, the passengers instead of a, a PNR centric view, they see us, uh, they will transform into seeing us as customers. So that will change how we, how the airport service providers and the airline interact. This will happen throughout uh, the next 10 years. And the digital identity and biometrics is another factor that will uh, make this hyper personalization or that will enable uh, this uh, hyper personalization. So that uh, one day I hope uh, not in 20 years, but much sooner, we are going to you know, get to the experiences uh, in our terms and in our consent, right? Because we don't want to be continuously contacted with different offers uh, and et cetera uh, from different providers. But in my terms, in the time I want, I can interact and uh, you know, enjoy a much better uh, experience. Uh, 
I, I just want to, I think that's a, I, you're saying technology is there. It doesn't, it has not made it to the airport yet. I think the technology might be scared of the airport experience as well. So yeah. uh, we it are It is there, suffering. but no. with one order and biometrics, there is still some more room that we need to take. So it right. becomes more available uh, for all the parties because we know regulations, we know legislations, we, we need to make, and these technologies will help uh, to make it happen and to overcome these challenges. I, I just I want to just, uh, Jacques and then uh, Rajesh sure. and then we'll sure. close. I mean, just, I mean, future sometimes could be faster than what, what, we, what we think about. So, for instance, as we speak today, at EGIS we're developing uh, the digital twin, airport digital twin. It, it means that you have a, a, a complete replica of your airport since planning until the decommissioning of the airport, because some airports and facilities will be decommissioned. And it will help you accelerate uh, and, and, and reduce the time you need for uh, maintain, maintaining your facilities. So you'll train your people before they go on the ground doing their maintenance digitally on how to, how to maintain the facility, uh, and then they'll go and do it. And this is really the comp starts since planning and design. Uh, you'll input your beam inside there, your big data, uh, your customer behaviors, and you have a, a complete, I would say, digital environment that can help better train your staff and make your airport more efficient. That's a very good point. I think the yeah. digital twin concept also okay. applied to applied to airports. Uh, Rajesh, just to close, from your point of view, from also if you think about monetization of of this technology, right? How do you see these opportunities coming? Up? Yeah. So I think the technology has already been finding a place in the airport design, airport development. If the last one decade was in terms of design optimization, the years to come in the next decade to come is where you will see more uh, increased use of technology. In fact, uh, if you really see today, uh, the COVID-19 has rather given it a much needed push for the use of technology. At our own airports in India, you know, we have many of the processes we have moved towards like uh, the facial recognition, uh, you know, uh, automated uh, uh, screeners in terms of uh, self-check-in, uh, AI-enabled uh, navigation. So I think it's the more and more airports are, uh, are moving towards uh, the, the, the adoption of technology. And my guess is the next decade is going to be a period where uh, having moved from functional airports to airports of, of uh, commercial prominence, now it's going to be all technology-driven beat at the on the operational aspects uh, or on the commercial aspect. So it's, it's, it's already finding its place. It's, it's going to be getting further momentum in the times to come. Thank you very much. I think now we need to move on. We have uh, other panelists to join. Thank you very much, gentlemen. I think a very good perspective. Thanks. Thank you. Now, um, we have four more people joining the stage right now. Um, Mohammed uh, Yusuf Al Bin Fala from Bahrain Airport, Raful Arab from uh, Tocumen Airport in Panama, Xavier Hustel from ADP, France, and Tom Mocket from, from NACO. Please come. Thank you very much. I think we we have had very good discussion in the previous in the, with the previous panelists. I think I want to ask again the question about the future of airports and, and hear different perspectives right from different regions, different uh, different backgrounds. So, in terms of the airport of the future. Um, Starting from, from Mr. Mohammed from Bahrain, how do you see the future? So from your local perspective, from the Middle East perspective, how do you see the, the future of airports in 20 years from now? Thank you, Luis. Uh, I think it's a, it's a tough question, to be honest. I don't think uh, it's the type of a question that one can give a definitive answer looking 20 years to the future. Things are changing all over the place. Uh, but I think there are common themes that one has to agree, which are driving the way in which airports are going to be defined. Uh, 
Uh, one of those is definitely the, the customer experience and what passengers are expecting airports to, to serve and provide. And uh, the customer experience is going to be something differing from one uh, airport and locality to the other. I don't think there is a one size fits all in defining what uh, a customer experience. We hear the argument of whether an airport is, uh, is an infrastructure or a destination, and that's, that's one driver in defining the, the customer experience. I think the second theme or factor that is going to define the, the airport of the future is technology, uh, and I think you have to look at technology from all aspects. Uh, Jack mentioned uh, the aircraft uh, development and the impact they are going to have on airport uh, infrastructure. I think that's uh, a key element that needs to be uh, factored in. And the third uh, item, I think, has to do with sustainability. It is an existential issue that we have to contribute in, in addressing as airports, as airlines, as, uh, and as a service providers in, 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 in the aviation sector. So I think these are the themes that will define, moving forward, the, the airport of the future. Thank you. I think on the customer experience, every airport will be different, right? Maybe uh, from Raful's perspective, right? You're looking at an airport that is highly focused on connection. Probably the, the experience of check-in and security is very different. So what is that future for, for you? And, and for that kind of airport. Yeah, I, I, I agree with my colleague that every airport is different. It depends on the business model that the airport is on. Uh, example, in our case, in Tokumen International Airport, as you say, 80% of our passengers are transit. So that means that uh, the, uh, the business model is different. We must uh, be very careful in what we do. Uh, it's, a, it's also a quick airport, as I call it, because it's an airport that uh, the passenger takes around 45 to an hour to get connection. So it's very different to other uh, airports that the time is longer. So the passenger's time is uh, very important for us. So, um, of course, technology will play a big role uh, for the passenger to know exactly where, where he has to go, where can he, what can he do, and especially offer uh, a various of, uh, variety of um, attractions, which as long as it goes with the technology. The technology keeps coming back, right? The, the technology, technology is the key. It keeps coming back, and key. it also is important as a hub in the region, a very important hub as a region, uh, we, we need to keep the security also. So technology, security, and the passenger experience will be part of, uh, cannot be separate. It, can be a, it must be uh, uh, all together. Thank you. Xavi, I think your perspective will be interesting also because you have many airports under your, your responsibility with very different business models, different, different uh, type of passengers, different locations. So, in your view, so if you had to come up with the future of the airports, mm. what would be your, your key topic, right? What, what is the, the future for you? Right. You're right, we are managing a lot of airports uh, in Europe and, and in, uh, in other countries. And I think that uh, in the years to come, the airports must begin hubs. But not the hubs that we knew in our industry with a lot of traffic and connection. It's hubs of new new items, hubs of new uh, uh, obligations. First of all, it will be hubs for energy. We have to prepare the cohabitation between traditional fuels, but power power will be will increase in consumption of our airports and hydrogen. Hydrogen. It's a lot to invest in infrastructure in the years to come if we want to to welcome hydrogen. We will have hubs as well for our stakeholders. As John said, our clients are as well companies, 
and we have to be the best for companies, the best for local authorities, the best for regulatory authorities, and the best as well for our customers. And all that is a hub, and all these stakeholders will be much and much now uh, very cautious on, on what we are doing. We will be hubs as well on the way to join the airports, not only cars, and John was quite very interesting about uh, the future of parkings. We will need trains now, subways, and be sure that, for example, in France, Charles de Gaulle in Paris may become, in the years to come, the eighth station, rail station of the Paris region. So, so airports could become now rail stations and metro stations. And we, we, we need as well to be hubs for connectivity. I think the future, it's no traffic, it's connectivity, rather than traffic, perhaps less planes, but with, with much people in the planes, and perhaps we see all airports may have different priorities, but connectivity is much useful in years to come than traffic. Thank you. Very interesting perspective. I, think I like the idea of the the energy hub, right? I think there is a lot of things happening in aviation and energy, mm. electricity for ground equipment, but hydrogen, I think that needs to be all provided in one single mm. area. Tom, from your perspective. Well, thank you very much indeed for uh, inviting me along today and for this session. I, I've, I've got a hard job, actually, because I've, I've got to follow at least seven other answers. I'm aware, yeah. Very, uh, <laughs> very, yeah, very, very comprehensive. But let me put it this way. Um, Look, customer experience is, is central. We know this. We've heard this all day long. We've heard this over the past years. Um, baggage transportation, I think John mentioned that earlier. How do you get the bag from home to the airport to the destination? Absolutely. How can we do that in a better way? Um, let's look also at uh, intermodal transit hubs. That's what we like to call it. At, at Narco, we focus on the future of airports. This is what we do. This is our job. Intermodal transit uh, options is absolutely key for airport development in the future. They're not just airports. And I think that uh, really ties into exactly what you're saying there. Making sure that there is not, a, not only intermodality in a region, but an, a national modality which is connected to airports is absolutely crucial to making sure they work properly. And then looking fundamentally at the different types of mobility is extremely important. We also heard, and they, it's, it's not my point, but it's a, a point made by many people over the last couple of days, uh, digitization. Look, we've, we've heard this a thousand times now through this, uh, through this conference. They're absolutely right. This is exactly what's happening. And the digital twin idea as well. Now, I think everyone is wrestling a little bit with this digital twin idea, exactly what is it. But essentially, it's about, it's about a process of simulating operations to make sure that your airport can work in, in uh, artificial time, so in real time it works better. And bring all these things together, to be perfectly honest, is the future of aviation. because. Uh, this is the airport of tomorrow. We are already today looking at that, but of course, existing infrastructure is very complicated, it's often uh, heavy, it's cumbersome, but there are many digital, sustainable and operational solutions to achieve that. And I think if, if we focus on those properly, there's some real, uh, real excitement going forward. Yeah. Thank you. I think uh, if we didn't, uh, as you were saying, you, you are the last one. It was very hard to find more things to say, but I think you still made it. And I think with the perspective of seven people or nine people, I think we got a good picture. I wanted to talk about sustainability, right? This is one of the key trends that uh, everyone is talking about. And, and maybe for, from, from ADP point of view, how do you see sustainability? Is it a threat or is it an opportunity for aviation and for airports? Well, your, your question is, is jeopardizing. Well, it's a challenge. <laughs> it's a challenge. It's a challenge since we need that. Uh, as I said, uh, challenges for airports is uh, social impact, environmental impact, to be useful for people to be, and, and, and to respect environmental matters, whatever be the country. That's why all that are challenges. Challenges may be opportunities, but at the beginning, you have to work for. And so the two challenges will be, first of all, cooperation. Now airports, much more, much more than, than before, we have to cooperate with local authorities, with our governments, regulators, stakeholders, population around the airports, and, uh, and things like that. We have as well to, to, take into, uh, to take into account sustainable buildings, because sustainable buildings, it's as well the future for architects and things like that. 
And the second challenge is that we, we don't have to, to, to hide ourselves. All that will be expensive. It will cost money to have better airports, but because people, governments, will ask more to their airports than before, they will ask for connectivity, they will ask for customer experience, but as well they will ask for sustainable infrastructure. That's why the challenge for, for airports is, is to answer to that. I think it's an opportunity since in airports you have many people who are very, very smart and many teams very smart, very proud of their jobs, but I think the future of our airport will change. That's why future of people working in airports will change, and it's an opportunity. Thank you. We have five minutes left. I wanted to get one more perspective from NACO and then a question on, on the role of public sector. From NACO perspective, you are involved in many of the latest developments. You're looking at, you know what's happening in, in, the, in the airports with regards to what's coming up. How do you see sustainability being embedded? in those, uh, in, in the future of the airports being yeah, developed th right th now. Thanks very much for the question. Um, I think one of the easiest ways to answer it is we, we look at sustainability in terms of mitigation and resilience. Going forward in the future, uh, the world is heating up, um, water is becoming more scarce, airports are being built in ever more complicated locations. Hmm. So we have to look at it from two perspectives. And, and maybe I step away now from the customer journey and the discussion there and look at the effects upon airports and airports effects upon the environment. And I think there are two things going on. And what we help uh, airports do, and we, we do this uh, in a very thorough way, is we look at one, how the airport ecosystem in itself can be more sustainable. And that is a complicated mission, you know, all the way from um, ground uh, emissions to waste, etc. And I'll, I'll keep it as short as I can. And the other one is the impact upon the environment towards the airport. And if we're looking at airports in the next 10, 20, 30 years, the environment is going to play a very, very important role in this. And some of the things we're discussing today are going to become difficult and challenged in the future if we don't tackle the environmental question. I think the Paris Agreement, uh, said, uh, said a little while ago, uh, speaks to that very clearly. And all this is really is a call is to look at mitigation and resilience to do with airports globally. OK. Last question for the panel. John was mentioning about the pressure on the business model, and his point of view was that public sector governments need to take a higher role, because his, his point of view is less revenues. This needs to enable the economy, so the government should be driving this. I wanted to hear from Mr. Mohammed first. How do you see it? Do you see the future of the airports being more public sector or private sector driven? I think the relationship between governments and the private sector is complementary. Uh, we don't need necessarily to have one or the other. Uh, and this is probably more the case when you have a situation like in the Kingdom of Bahrain. We have one airport, and hence it is more of a primary infrastructure facility. Uh, so even if it was privatized, it would be required to play a role beyond being uh, purely a business. Uh, during the pandemic, uh, we did not shut down the airport. We stayed operational 24-7 uh, because it is the only connectivity to the island, not only to bring stranded passengers back, but also to facilitate the, uh, the, the, the delivery of essential goods uh, to the country. So I think uh, uh, airports will continue to be developed jointly by, uh, by uh, governments and uh, private sector. And the private sector can bring value, I think, to airports, uh, particularly when uh, airports are developed beyond being simply an infrastructure. Uh, going back to the, to the question of whether uh, an airport is, is purely an infrastructure or a destination, I think uh, in certain cases airports have to play the role of being destinations. Uh, airports have always been platforms for economic development across many other sectors, whether it is businesses or tourism uh, or other uh, verticals from within the air transport uh, industry itself. Thank you very much. 
Last, uh, last contribution, Mr. Raful, I think. Yes. Very different context for you. You are probably being a connecting hub. How do you see this, uh, the role of the... Yeah, this, the this is a very interesting question, especially for Tokumen International Airport. Tokumen International Airport is a corporation 100% owned by the government. Um, so, it, it, and it has been a successful story. We're now uh, starting to look at uh, concession, doing a concession, small airports in the country. But that's uh, because of a plan of expanding the, the connectivity in, within the region, within the, the country. But uh, even though it's 100% owned by the government, now that we just have the, the, the struggle of the pandemic, we have to go through the same, the same uh, uh, problems and the same uh, um, uh, situation than any other corporation or, 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 or business corporation, private corporation. And, um, and we have been successful to it. So it, it doesn't mean that, the, that one thing or the other will be the best way to, to they will work for it. At this time, uh, we are happy to, to, to say that uh, Tokumen International Airport has reached 90% 90, 90 of the passengers that used to have in 2019. So our recovery is going very fast, uh, even better than, than we thought, our expectations. Uh, uh, so it depends on the business model that you have in your country and, and what it's the airport, uh, the function of the airport in, in, in this situation. Okay, thank you very much, gentlemen. Thanks so much for for staying with us. It was a very insightful discussion. Uh, thanks so much for your time and for your thoughts. I think this has been very useful. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much.